So you're familiar now with how to calculate quantities of reactants and products in chemical reactions. But so far we've been calculating exact quantities. That is, we've been assuming that we always have exactly the right ratio of reactants as dictated by the mole ratio in the chemical equation. But what happens if we don't have exactly the right ratio of reactants? For instance, say we were reacting hydrogen with oxygen to give water, blowing up a hydrogen balloon for instance. We know that two moles of hydrogen reacts with one mole of oxygen. But what if we happen to accidentally mix two moles of hydrogen with two moles of oxygen? What would be left at the end of the reaction? Well, you may be able to work this out, but let me give you another analogy. I'm going to use this nice simulation from FET at the University of Colorado, which uses the analogy of making sandwiches. So here we have a reaction in which two slices of bread are combining with one slice of cheese to make one cheese sandwich. So the ratio of bread to cheese reactants is 2 to 1. Here below you can see that we have at the moment exactly that ratio, 6 slices of bread and 3 of cheese. And we end up with exactly the number of sandwiches that we expect, 3. But what if we muck up the ratio of reactants and put in 5 slices of cheese? Well, what happens is that the bread runs out before all the cheese has reacted and we're left with excess cheese, leftovers. Alright, let's try it the other way around. The expected ratio is 2 to 1, but if I have more than twice as much bread, let's bump it up to 7 slices, then the cheese runs out first and we have excess bread. Chemical reactions work the same way. The reaction will proceed as long as all the reactants are present. However, if one of them runs out, the reaction stops, even if there's some of the others left over. The reactant that runs out first is called the limiting reactant because it limits how far the reaction can go. In this example, it was the cheese. The reactants that aren't completely used up are called the excess reactants. Here it was the bread. So what's left sitting in the reaction vessel, or the plate at the end are as much product as was able to be made plus whatever unused excess reactants are left. Let's return to the original example where we mixed two moles of hydrogen and two moles of oxygen. I'm going to represent each mole of gas by a balloon. The mole ratio is 2 to 1, so the two moles of hydrogen here are going to react with one mole of oxygen and they're going to produce two moles of water. Well, that accounts for one mole of oxygen, but the remaining mole of oxygen has nothing to react with, so it's unchanged. And what we're left with at the end is two moles of water and the one unreacted mole of original oxygen. Here, the hydrogen is the limiting reactant because it was the one that ran out and determined when the reaction stopped. The oxygen was the excess reactant because we had more than was needed to exactly react with the limiting reactant. OK, so let's ramp this up a bit. We'll use a different reaction and I'm going to ask if I react 1.8 moles of nitrogen with 2.5 moles of hydrogen, how many moles of ammonia will be produced? Well, the first thing we have to do is to work out which is the limiting reactant because it's that that determines how much product is formed. Remember, once the limiting reactant runs out, the reaction stops and no more product is made. So if we're to calculate how much ammonia is made, we first need to know which reactant is going to run out first. I've sketched the strategy for doing this here and I'm going to work through it. First, let's highlight how many moles of each reactant we actually have present. So that's 1.8 moles of nitrogen and 2.5 moles of hydrogen. Next, we'll write out the relevant mole ratio from the equation. That's one mole of nitrogen reacts exactly with three moles of hydrogen. Now, we choose one of the reactants and we write the number of moles that we actually have underneath the mole ratio. It doesn't matter which one we choose. Because it's a ratio, we can use it in either direction. So let's take nitrogen for this example. We have 1.8 moles of nitrogen. Now, the mole ratio is 1 to 3, so to find the amount of hydrogen that would be needed to react exactly with 1.8 moles of nitrogen, we just multiply that by 3, and that gives us 5.4 moles of hydrogen. What this tells us is that we need 5.4 moles of hydrogen to fully react with the 1.8 moles of nitrogen. But 
we only have 2.5 moles of hydrogen. So that's not enough to fully react with the nitrogen. And that means that the hydrogen is going to run out first. Hence, hydrogen is the limiting reactant here. That means that nitrogen must be the excess reactant. And that's because the hydrogen will run out before all of the nitrogen has reacted. So there'll be nitrogen left over. So to predict how much ammonia is going to form, that's the second part of this problem, we should use the hydrogen amount as our basis. Since it is the limiting reactant, we assume that it all reacts to form ammonia. The ratio of hydrogen to ammonia is 3 to 2 from the equation. So we take the moles of hydrogen that we have available, that's 2.5, and we divide by 3 and multiply by 2 to give us 1.7 moles of ammonia produced. Now, I just want to show you that it doesn't matter which reactant you choose when you're working out which one is the limiting reactant. Just now I started with nitrogen, so let me now do it the other way round and start with hydrogen. I'll write out the mole ratio again, and we know that we have 2.5 moles of hydrogen present, so I'll put that in as the amount that's present. Now, the mole ratio is 3 hydrogens to 1 nitrogen, so to work out how much nitrogen is needed to fully react with that amount of hydrogen, I have to divide by 3. So that's 2.5 divided by 3, which equals 0.83 moles of nitrogen. So I need 0.83 moles of nitrogen to fully react with 2.5 moles of hydrogen. And you'll see that we have more than 0.83 moles of nitrogen present. In fact, we have 1.8 moles. So that means that all the hydrogen will react and there will still be some nitrogen left over afterwards. So that leads us to the same conclusion as before, that in this case hydrogen is the limiting reactant and nitrogen is the excess reactant.